My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Slay the Spire where we have an exclusive this episode. That's right, we are breaking new ground. Uh, not only are we going to be showing off a new character mod, uh, but the release of this video is going to coincide with the debut of that character mod into the world. Uh, in specific, it will release in the Steam Workshop at the same time as this video releases on YouTube. The mod in question is the Guardian mod by Michael Mayhem and Z Wolfies for additional design. You might recognize the name Michael Mayhem from being the primary and sole designer of Slimebound. Slimebound, of course, being a character that is loosely visually and thematically based on one of the bosses from the first act, the slime boss. Guardian mod seems to reinforce that, being based on another boss from the first act, the Guardian. Uh, if you do like the mod, by the way, and you want to support Michael Mayhem, check out his multiplayer party game, Sumo, in early access on Steam. Uh, the link for that will be in the description below this video. There's also an extra thanks section for the creators of Mod the Spire and the Discord modding community. Uh, credits to Keo, the God, uh, Blank the Evil, Evil Pickle, Johnny Devo, Rainer, Johnny Bazooka89, Skyson, Hyposock, Chronometrics, Cobting, Mukows Go Moo for all the help, and a shout out to Rhapsody on YouTube for all of the modded content creation. Well, isn't that lovely? I'm actually touched. Thank you very much. Uh, let's actually dive into the character at this point. 80 HP, as well as 99 gold to start with, a construct of the Spire reprogrammed to destroy it. Begins with Mode Shifter. When you lose 10 HP, gain 10 block and 2 defensive mode. We'll explore what defensive mode is as we go in here. Let's have a look at the basic deck. So the basic deck is 4 strikes, 4 defends, 1 curl up, gain 10 block and 2 defensive mode. Sorry, 2 defensive mode. Gain 10 block but 2 energy and gain defensive mode. Defensive mode. Gain two block whenever you play a card. While you're in defensive mode, you deal three damage back to attackers. So that's thorns, effectively. Uh, when this is upgraded, it also gets the effect socket. Uh, so there are certain cards for this character that aren't really cards. They're a resource called gems that you can use free actions at campsites to socket into other cards to modify the effects of those cards. It is super interesting. There's also the Twin Slam, which is just four damage two times, upgrades to six two times, but gets an extra socket. So you can see the foundations of two of the different strategies in here, or at the very least, two of the different kind of foundational mechanics. Uh, also, the Twin Slam, you can see here, has a socket neatly under the energy cost. So you'll be able to actually see the gems that are socketed in each thing. Uh, okay, so upgrading cards for this character, like, I haven't got any gems yet, so upgrading a card and getting a socket there or an extra socket here doesn't seem to make too much sense to me. Lose all gold to obtain a rare card. I mean, that lets me look at some really cool stuff. Compile package. Choose one of three packages to add to your hand. Exhaust. Upgrade. Choose one of three packages to add to your hand. The cards the package adds will all be upgraded. So packages are zero cost exhausting skills that generate three cards inspired by a chosen construct of the Spire. So you can go into the mode of a certain enemy. I think there's like a, an orb walker one. I think there's a sentry one. Is there a sentry one? I don't want to speak for it. But it can be a cool way to generate your build on the fly by only including one card. There's also Exploit Gems here, which is draw a card, and it has two sockets for zero cost. Upgrades to have a third socket. You'll note, this doesn't say Exhaust. So if you socket this with gems that have effects like draw a card and gain an energy, this can have draw a card, draw a card, gain an energy, gain an energy for zero energy that does not exhaust. There's also the Stasis Engine over here. Gain energy and draw a card whenever you play three zero-cost cards in a single turn. Now, this is super interesting because it ties into a mechanic, not explicitly, but in implication at the very least, of this character, which is Stasis. 
yeah, upgrades to become a nay, uh, which is you can put a card into stasis and it will be locked there for the card's energy cost plus one turns. And then after that amount of time, it comes back into your hand at zero cost and you can play it. So it's kind of a, a delayed gratification effect. We'll take exploit gems here because I love exploit gems. I have done some nutty things in my test runs with this character using exploit gems. And I am keen to do some nutty things again. I was going to phrase that differently and then thought better of it. <laughs> so you can see there I actually curled up. We curl up here. Uh, defensive mode, gain two block whenever you play a card. Defense mode will retain for one turn. So defensive mode can stack. You stack a bunch of defensive mode, and that is how many turns you'll remain in defensive mode. And when it is removed, we will lose the three thorns we currently have. All right. Vent Steam. Apply two weak and vulnerable socket. Upgrades to three and three with two sockets. It's also the Priming Beam. Deal 8 damage. Increase the damage dealt by beam cards by 1 this combat. So that immediately clues you in to an archetype being beam-related cards. There's also Shield Charger. Gain 10 block while in stasis, which I just spoke before, but I'll read the actual keyword text for it. A card in stasis gains a turn counter equal to its cost plus 1. Turn counter is reduced by 1 at the start of your turn. Okay, I didn't say that part. Uh, when the counter reaches 0, it is returned to your hand, becomes 0 cost until played. Uh, but Shield Charger, while this card is in stasis, when this card's turn counter is reduced, gain 5 block. I'm assuming that gains directly on your character and not on the Shield Charger card. So when you gain it back, it's like, oh, get blocks for 25. Um, so I'm assuming that actually just gives you the passive effect. I'm not going to take any Spyco stock here. Not... I, I don't think I would have, even if I could have, just because of how much it slows you down. I don't know. If they were, like, zero cost draw a card as well as their effects, I would probably take them all of the time. But as they currently are, one cost don't draw a card, I don't know if I'll ever take them. So I think there's a happy medium to be found. So I've got to remember to curl up before I do anything else. If I intend to defend, because then I get the extra defense out of all of the other cards I play. Okay, so Fragmented Gem. This is the first gem that we get to see. Zero cost. It's a skill. It's not really a skill, right? It's a completely different resource. They are in your deck until you socket them, though. Uh, gain a Crystal Shiv. Uh, this is picking up the Crystal keyword from Replay the Spire, so ignore that part. It's just a Shiv. It's just a normal Shiv. Uh, there's also Bronze Armor. Gain two Artifact. Upgrades to three. And multi-beam deals 10 damage to all enemies. Play a random beam card from your draw pile. I actually don't want any of these. Maybe bronze armor. Yeah, I'll take a bronze armor. Woo, all right. Um, I think I'll offer a defensive card here. Not offering exploit gems. It's too powerful. Should have played the curl up first there anyway. Definitely strike the backliner. And you know what? I'm just going to double defend. I'm not even... I'm not going to accept this one point of damage. Why should I? And I'll even make you kill yourself. All right. Incinerate. Deal 9 damage plus an additional 2 damage every turn this combat. That's a debuff on the enemy. Upgrades to 11 and 3 with a socket. Emergency. Reduce your rightmost card in stasis. Sorry, return it to your hand and reduce its cost to 0. So you just pull it out, right? Okay, cool. Upgrades to be 0 cost. Makes sense. Uh, Walker Claw. Uh, Deal 16 damage. Strength affects this card 2 times. Upgrades to be 20 damage and it is affected twice with a socket. Um, I still don't think I take any of those. Not yet. I'm going to upgrade the Twin Slam for extra damage, but I'm actually really annoyed that I'm doing that. And I'm also going to start dodging Elites. 
I really wanted to have exploit gems already with like a couple gems in it by this point. But I've only seen one gem so far and it was one that I desperately didn't want. Mm -hmm. Neat. So you'll see the thorns wears off. Despite the fact that I had a debuff that said thorns wears off at the end of your turn, uh, or rather when you leave defensive mode, the artifact did not negate the loss of those thorns. Interesting. Okay, I'm trying to get on board with exactly which things I can and cannot influence with the artifact. This is not necessarily... This is in the base game as well. Not necessarily always immediately uh, evident. Okay. Let's exploit those gems. Why are you all doing so little damage here? Why are they losing so much strength? Okay, so they're losing strength because of the well-fed effect. The well-fed effect isn't leaving them? Oh, that's wild as hell. Why is that happening? <laughs> oh no, well-fed is broken. Damn it. Uh, I, I think I will have to message Evil Pickle about that. All right, uh, time capacitor, gain two stasis slots. So two more slots, which you can put other stasis cards into. Upgrades to three. Uh, prismatic beam, deal five damage. Then repeat for each gem on this card. Upgrades to seven. That can be really powerful early. Uh, temporal shield, gain seven block and gains an additional seven block if you have a card in stasis. Upgrades to 10 and 10. Old nail, perhaps it could be reforged. I always do like taking that quest, even if I don't finish it. Kill up, exploit, armor. Yeah, I definitely didn't need to curl up there. Just getting curl up happy. Amber, accelerate the rightmost card in stasis. That is a powerful gem. To put in something like exploit gems that I can just replay constantly. Do I want to do a stasis build? I was intending not to, but... I don't know, with emergency. Let's do it. A stasis build might actually be the only build I haven't managed to get off the ground in my own play yet. So this is gonna be interesting for me. Okay. Doing very little damage, but that's okay. We're taking very little damage as well. I mean, gaining two artifact here doesn't actually accomplish anything for us, does it? There's no debuffs that go on this entire time. On one more strike next turn. Got him. Not bad. Getting the full block that turn as well as just a little bit extra. Three damage in return. very least, we're only one strike on the back line and down. Or away from killing. Lame. Maybe we're one more thorns away from killing? We're too many shuffles away from actually taking advantage of that. Yikes. 
Yikes. Oh, thank you. Basically, the only way to salvage that turn in terms of how much damage we were going to take was being drawing... Was going to be drawing curl up. There we go. Turned it into a sentence at the very end there. Prussian blue paint. You can now smith curses. Smithing a curse removes it from your deck and upgrades a random card in your deck. Love it. Um, Ancient construct. At the start of your turn, if you have no artifact, gain one artifact. Upgrades to be one cost. This has been changed since last I played with it. Interesting. Uh, when I played with it, it was, I think, one cost, and it said gain one strength every time you lose an artifact, and then you gain three strength on play of Ancient Construct. Maybe there's another card that does that, and I'm misremembering. Piercing Hide gains seven block and three thorns for this turn, gain defensive mode. So will I be able to keep the thorns using the artifact? It's uncertain to me because I can't keep the thorns from curl up, but this is a different way of giving you thorns. So I might be able to keep those thorns. Do I take the time bomb? Oh, I do. Of course I do. Sure, we'll just put that in stasis. Nito and it's out of stasis. A boom. Planning would put cards in stasis for us. Prismatic Barrier is the same as the Prismatic Beam, I believe, from beforehand. Uh, it just does it with block. And Time Bomb, again. We'll take another Time Bomb. We're going all Time Bomb up in here. Uh, let's put that in the Exploit Gems. We want the Exploit Gems to accelerate the Time Bombs. Bronze Armor Plate. Whenever you use a card while in defensive mode, gain one more block. Hmm. Not bad. Uh, there's also Temporal Shield. Gain seven block, gain seven block if you have a card in stasis. Quite good for this deck. Elephant Mask. At the start of each combat, the enemy with the lowest, most HP, rather, loses 87 strength this turn. I'll take the Temporal Shield, and the bomb would actually be interesting for this deck. Like, it's just a bomb deck. That'd be so interesting to do. Defend the entire time and just like bomb. Oh, that's too interesting. I have to do it. That's too perfect. Oh. But that... But that number's slightly higher than the number I have. Sucks. Right, dig. Yeah, I did get dig. Give me a random relic here. If your hand is full, when drawing a card, draw an extra card next turn instead. All right, not a great relic for us, unfortunately. I want to gain the artifact this turn. Wait a second. Why did I curl up? God damn it, Ryan. I keep reflexively curling up. Even when the enemy's not attacking for a couple trillion years. Alright, so... Exhaust. So those bombs do exhaust. That is the primary problem we are going to run into here. Okay. Strike him with a double slime. accelerated the rightmost card. Why did I do that? I was attempting not to do that. God damn it. Yeah, this defend isn't going to be enough. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Yeah, I, I should have known that the bombs just weren't going to be enough for this fight. Especially because they exhaust. 
If we had the bomb in that fight, we would have been perfect. Oh. We would have been golden. Alright. Um, enemies in the next three combats have one HP. And that could kill an elite for us. Mm, actually, no, it couldn't. I don't want to go with the random rare relic for the three basic cards. No, I'm going to upgrade the twin slam. Get some extra damage here. Let's me retain all of the control that I possibly can here. Right. Got two this turn. That's fine. Do get the curl up. Perfect draws. We had a perfect draw in the opening hand as well, so can't complain too loudly. Ruby gained two strength for this turn. That is one that you oftentimes do want uh, in setup cards, but also in a deck that has artifacts, because then you can just gain strength using the Ruby gems. I'll upgrade a strike, sure. Transform and upgrade a random card. We got a uh, transform on Twin Strike. Damn. And we got Garnet out of it. Apply one vulnerable to all enemies. Hang on. No, I haven't seen a pearl. Never mind. All right. Uh, curl up. And then I play Garnet and Strike for the kill on the backliner. Not too pleased about which card I lost there, but that's okay. Another Ruby. I'm feeling like I take Prismatic Barrier and then put Garnet in it so that I can play my defense at the start of my turn. And then everything's vulnerable thereafter already. I wanted to kill that frontliner, but investing two strikes and then taking five damage this turn is just too much. Okay, we should be fine now. It would take a truly awful draw to result in us taking much more damage. Got him. Courts, yes, I love this. Uh, gem, draw a card. Huge fan of that gem effect. Oh, it's called suspension. Cool. Uh, harden, deal 10 damage, gain 10 blocks. So it's dash, right? Upgrades to be exactly dash, in fact, but it has a socket as well. All right, one vulnerable. And I'll also put the quartz in there. So even upgrade it, so it's now six more block. Neat. So it's 18 block, draw a card, and apply one vulnerable to all enemies for one energy right now. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm actually going to get the liquid bronze in this battle. It's kind of going to help slightly offset the regen. Like it half offsets the regen here. Taking two damage this turn. Oh. Neat. I can even use a defensive mode this turn. Lovely. And I even get to extend that defensive mode to the next turn because I'm about to break my mode shift. So playing non-defensive cards this turn defends me. That Prismatic Barrier is really powerful right now, but I've invested every, sing every single thing that I have into it. Lame. 
extremely lame. Come on, strike to finish off that backliner. Uh, no, you heal first, right? No, you heal afterwards? Sweet. Works perfectly for me. We have played so many rounds this combat. Let it finally end. 10 foot pole, take 50% less damage outside of combat, as well as the emeralds. Gain two decks for this turn. Let's also charge up on your next turn. Gain nine block and one strength. Upgrades to 12 and two. So if you're comfortable with that delayed effect. I'm not. I'm not super comfortable with the delayed effect, actually. Rune of Simplicity. Strikes and defense can be upgraded in a number of times upon pickup upgrade to randomly. Okay. I hope not to get Curl Up as my fifth card in this hand. Sweet. So I'm going to wake the enemy up this turn because I want to have the first turn after they wake up to be me playing the Curl Up. Why did I do that? Prismatic Barrier Strike Strike would have been so much better. Damn it, Ryan. Okay, well, we're still maintaining the perfect so far. Dex reduction is really rough on us. At least we're now in defensive mode for free. And we're totally fine. We'll be able to kill. Neat. By Lug Vulan, but hello to Bandana. Gain two thievery for the first three turns of combat. Sapphire, gain defensive mode. Okay. I'll put that on curl up, actually. Gain two triggers of defensive mode. Uh, so, deal 30 damage. While in stasis, when this card's turn counter is reduced, increase damage by three. So that's got to be increase the damage of this card. That's making me rethink how other cards might work. Specifically, gain five block, right? Because it was while this card is in stasis... For each turn that it has its cost reduced, gain five block. Is that is that only applicable to that card, or is that a buff that you have available outside of combat while that card is in stasis? Or available outside of stasis while that card is in stasis? I'm not entirely certain. Shield Charger, this one specifically. Hmm. Maybe this does just get more effective while it's in stasis and you don't get block. Well, I'm not going to know because that's not the idea of this build. I'm going to take Evasive Protocol, actually. Just as a splash of a little bit of that into the deck. Um, the next two times you obtain a copy of a card, obtain a copy of it. Repulsor, exhaust the first two status or curse cards drawn each turn. Okay. Uh, there's also the Priming Beam, which we've spoken about before. Charge Core, draw a card at the start of your next turn. Has a socket, upgrades to get another socket. No, upgrades, just three more damage. Uh, Emeralds, gems don't upgrade, by the way. Uh, stasis Strike, Ethereal, deal eight damage. Place this card into Stasis. And it has a socket. 
So you play it, it puts itself in stasis, it comes back next turn, and you play it again. So every turn, it's just 11 damage and a trigger of the socketed effect. Right? No, because when you play it, you put it into stasis, it goes into stasis for two turns. So it's every three turns. But it countdowns at the, counts down rather at the start of your turn. So you play it at the end of a turn, countdown, countdown, it comes back. Okay, so it is... Play, countdown... Countdown comes back. Yeah, it is every two turns. I mean, you could put an energy in that and it gets ridiculous. Okay. Let's put the defensive mode into curl up. That also counts as removing cards for the sake of quests. We're going to be in defensive mode very often, so evasive protocol makes sense here. I do actually just want to remove another card from the deck. Upgraded Strike. Let's upgrade this Stasis Strike as well. Okay. We should be very, very capable of potently defending ourselves here. You have to play Stasis Strike the first time you draw it. Fortunately, didn't get my defensive mode that turn. Sixteen damage. It goes back in. Okay, I'm still in defensive mode. And I've got my Stasis Strike and my Prismatic Barrier. Ooh. Lovely. Curl up. Gain defensive mode for a ridiculous amount of time. And am I dead again? They're both a... All right. This is going to be a longer episode. I am not accepting a loss in my first video with this character. The first five times I played this character, I won. I've been trying to avoid a couple of things that I know are builds that I did beforehand that were very, very, very successful because I just picked everything that had basically the same keywords on it. I just made myself a defensive mode powerhouse with a bunch of different powers. But also... I should just play those. Let's get the random rare relic. Peace pipe. You can now remove cards from your deck at rest sites. All right, let's... Oh, the thin deck in me. The thin deck daddy in me wants to play this a certain way. And when I hear that siren song, I must answer the C. I... The thin deck calls to me. Hmm. If I take suspension, I can take status uh, stasis cards and put them in the discard. Uh, sorry, put them in stasis really easily. Taking it. Three two random cards. Nice. Curl up and defend. Cool. Two defensive options. Uh, we'll also upgrade to defend here. Lovely. While looking for a place to rest after your latest battle, you find yourself amongst a field of flowers in full bloom. There appears to be a shiny object just out of reach. Maybe if you tried really hard, you could grab it. I'm going to get the star compass here. Uh, holds the deepest secrets of the spire. Perhaps if you're worthy, right click to activate. So I'm just not going to activate it until something looks very obviously related to that. Seems the safest I can do, frankly. Why'd I do that? I didn't need to strike that backliner. It was going to die against my thorns. Okay. No, I'm doing a stasis build. Take 
I do need to upgrade the damage in this deck a little, actually, because I still have two elites that I want to push through. Sweet. Turn one kill of an elite. Gain my 313 gold there. I'm going to suspend a defense just so that I know in two turns time I already have one upgraded defense on my side. Neat. Turns out it was actually kind of necessary. Suspend the curl up. So in three turns time, it comes back into my hand now. Oh no, I think I may have accidentally put it out of sync with when I want it. No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. It comes back to my hand at the start of this turn. Zero cost, beautiful. Unnecessary, but beautiful nonetheless. Uh, start each combat with additional energy and... Place a card from your discard pile into stasis. We shouldn't have a discard pile too often. I don't want any of those yet. Excellent. That curl up will be available right on time. So, Temporal deals 8 damage if you have a card in stasis. Yes, that's the kind of thing we're looking for. Bottled Geyser, upon pick up, choose a card. Each time you shuffle that card, uh, shuffle your deck rather, that card is placed on top. We'll do that with Suspension. This deck currently sucks, like a lot. I am desperate to find this the right stasis card to just make it pop off. I'm going to suspend curl up here. That gets temporal strike activated. Helps us murder the backliner. I'll even stasis another card to get the other temporal strike activated. Oh, two turns time. We're going to have a goddamn parade. My jawworm. Spiker protocol. Ooh. Sentry beam. Deals 5 damage, place a sentry wave on the top of your draw pile. Sentry wave, zero cost exhausting skill that applies one week to all enemies, draws a card, plus an additional card when upgraded, and places a sentry boom, uh, boom, beam on top of your deck. Oh, so they just alternate. Yeah. I mean, so your card deficit one turn, but card positive the next? Interesting. Seems like we'll just always have that active in a deck that's this thin. Speaking of a deck being this thin, we're removing more cards from the deck. The whole identity of this deck is supposed to be that it's a thin deck. Defend into stasis. And we'll attack again this turn then. Because I know next turn I have the weaken with the sentry wave. And I'll suspend a defend. Get back a totally reasonable amount of defense this turn. Neat. Alright, 
definitely suspend a defend. I could have suspended the zero cost defend if I wanted to defend next turn. I wonder if that would have worked or whether it would have taken the base cost of it. Okay. Definitely want to suspend the curl up. Yeah, I should. It's just perfect timing. Tiny chest upon pickup gain 30 gold. You're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms as well as... God oh, damn it. Costs one less for each gem in this card. Deal 12 damage. Upgrades to 15. So it can be one energy deal 15 with two extra effects. Pretty cool. But also... One energy deal 15 with two different effects is the same as what Prismatic Beam does. It's deal five damage for each gem in this card. Or deal five damage, deal an additional five for each gem in this card. And it has two sockets. Um, but it also upgrades to seven. So it's 21 damage plus two socketed effects. And both of them need to have full sockets to be at their full effect. Hmm... So also Ruby, gain two strength this turn, and Revenge Protocol, gain four strength at the end of your turn whenever your block is broken while in defensive mode. Gain defensive mode. Uh, I, I can't, I can't. Banking on that just seems like a big loser. Let's suspend a slime. Gets it out of the deck. And we are basically totally covered at this point. Got him. Whew. All right. Roll attack. Stasis strike. I do like stasis strike. It is just a constant card in stasis for us. Is it a bonfire room? We should do that then. All right. Smith, Toke, Rest. I mean, we actually just have the standard allotment here plus Dig. We're very good at defending. I don't think we need to worry about resting before this fight. Okay, Temporal Strike doesn't have an upgrade, according to this. So, that's unfortunate. Uh, I guess I'll go with a Dig. Bronze Armor Plate. Whenever you use a card to gain, while in defensive mode rather, gain one more block. That's totally excellent for us. Extremely relevant. Let's curl up and Stasis Strike here. Uh, I'm also going to weaken you. Just because it feels like that should have already happened here, frankly. Alright, Stasis Strike is back. Curl Up is ready for two more turns time. Uh, I should also try and keep an eye on that Curl Up. Find the way to stall it at the right time to get the right effect at the right time. We're dealing a lot more damage here than I actually expected. So I put it in stasis for three. So let's go attack countdown, right? So this goes in for three attack countdown. Attack countdown. Attack. I get the new card. Okay, yeah, I suspend curl up this turn. It would have been super useful that turn, but suspending it here. Unless I have made a horrible mistake. I've made a horrible mistake.
I am not allowing this first episode to finish without a GD win. We will go into the extra quarters. Just gonna play every different archetype of this character available. Um... I'm gonna remove a strike. <clears throat> and I'm gonna choose a path that has very, very, very few elites. <clears throat> very distinctly non Rhapsody things to do here, but hey. Clearly, I'm the one that's gotta adapt. Alright. It's a train. Stasis field! Gain seven block places, gun into stasis. Okay, so there is a companion piece. Uh, Citrine. Gain energy on a gem. Lovely. Um, gain three thorns while in defensive mode. Gain defensive mode. It's very, very, very powerful right there. Uh, each time the enemy takes damage this combat, gain one strength for the turn. Each time that enemy takes damage this combat, I gain one strength for the turn. I don't know how this combat and the turn resolve in this circumstance. Uh, reroute, we've seen before. Guardian Quirl, deal four damage four times. Five damage four times on the upgrade. Uh, also has Socket. I might actually just ignore this first store. There's nothing there I'm actually super into. So we'll upgrade a random card. We got another Citrine. Oh my god. Lost to defend for it. If I can get an exploit gems here, we are in such a good position. I need something that I can double socket. Because otherwise these Citrine are actually just really, really awful. Taking up space in my hand without really providing me anything else. The Citrine! Oh my god! Okay, give me a card that I can sock it! Quartz! What are you doing? Oh god, Quartz is really good as well. Come on! Need the ability to sock it things! Um. Quartz is fine because it doesn't cost the same in the deck as the Citrine right now. Alright, Curl Up should probably be upgraded. But I don't want to put the Citrine or the Quartz in the Curl Up or the Twin Slam is the thing. I'll upgrade the Twin Slam. I need more aggression here. Relic. Ooh, okay. I'm pick up gain 30 gold. Your 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark room. School. So, next space is 16. Take the Runicate Cosyhedron. Oh, gosh. Next space is 18. All right. Heavy Jacket. At the start of each combat, gain one plated armor of every two relics you had. Yay! Two plated armor. Roll the Runic Icosa Hedron. We get 15. Draw one additional card every turn. Hell yeah. Alright. Court draws us a card. And we kill. Please, 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 please. Gain a Crystal Ward. A Crystal Ward is a zero-cost block exhaust card. So it's kind of like the inversion of a Shiv. Uh, there's also Emerald. Gain two decks for this turn. That would make sense to socket in a Curl Up, probably. Or even in a Twin Slam and then just defend the turn after. Ancient Protection. Gain one dex. Add a random power card to your hand. It goes zero this turn. Upgrades to be one dex and one artifact. I'll take that. Uh, we got Baseball upon pick up. A random card in your deck becomes free. I think that actually previously was going to upgrade to become free. No, it's just going to upgrade to have one artifact. Okay, cool. Glad I upgraded it then. So I could put these two Citrine in this Twin Slam and then it becomes so much better, but... Uh, if I do that, I miss out on the opportunity to do other cool things with it later instead.
In four block at the end of each turn, while in defensive mode, gain defensive mode. Running across Adrian at the start of each turn, gain an extra energy. Wild. Having all of these citrines, all of these gems in the deck is going to be really bad because they're just skills diluting my deck against the Gremlin Knob. It's not good. Uh, I'm going to attack potion here. I wonder if I take and play Fierce Bash anyway. No, it should definitely be hard. Vulnerability doesn't manage to apply to me. I'm going to curl up and harden here. Get that extra turn of the defensive mode. Awesome. Got him. Uh, Prussian blue paint. You can smith curses. Smithing a curse removes it from your deck and upgrades a random card. So there's a bunch of cards we don't want. Actually, you know what? I will take Vent Steam. Applies to weak and vulnerable. Upgrades that to get an extra socket. Really good for us. Running Kakos Hedron. Increase the cost of cards in your hand by one for this combat. Gem finder at the end of each combat, at the end of combat rather, uh, choose a common gem to add to your deck. Beautiful. Mm, I fear we're not going to be able to kill that looter in time. Yeah. A well-founded fear, it turns out. Somehow, I don't think this bodes well for my ability to fight the slime boss. We have no damage in this deck yet. Need damage. Tentacle juice is good. Uh, Quartz. I'm on the verge of killing this deck because I want this deck to be better in a different circumstance. This is this is not how I should be playing. I just need to deal with how the deck is. Okay, so Quartz into Twin Slam. And also Citrine into Twin Slam. That's now a zero cost Twin Slam. Then we'll enhance the... Vent Steam with Citrine. Getting some more money. We'll upgrade that Vent Steam. And unfortunately, because I can't start socketing things after the upgrade, that's where that story ends. Come on. Heal to full. Okay. Not bad. Could be a lot worse. Like five constricted to the enemy, so they'll be taking some damage. Construction form for two turns. I cannot lose HP or play attacks. That's fine. Obviously. I can't take damage this turn. Hell yeah! All oh, those slimed out of the deck. Enemy doesn't split this turn. Why are they dealing zero damage this turn? What is happening? I don't know why this one's happening. I appreciate it though.
Wanted that to be a pretty good split there, but it really wasn't. Okay. Definitely want to start with a curl up in the defense team. I'd strike the front liner, but then you go down to 24. That's beyond the split point. I don't want to split you this turn. Looking to split you with more damage. Yeah, this will do. Sweet. Vi oh, I forgot that gives me an energy back. I could have played the slime thereafter. That's my bad. But this is working a lot better than I had any reason to expect it might. Especially given our recent run of luck. That said, there's no world in which we're alive as well as having decided not to socket those previous. If I get exploit gems here, I'm going to be so mad. We didn't. Okay. Uh, Hyperbeam. Deals 40 damage to all enemies. Skip your next turn. Upgrades to 50 to all enemies. I mean, I can't even play that by base yet. Accelerate all cards in stasis. Upgrades to accelerate all cards in stasis without exhausting. And spot weakness... Weak point, rather. Each time the enemy takes damage this combat, gain one strength for the turn. I don't know how that works. I'm going to take it. Whenever you play a card, add two copies of it to your discard pile at half power. How do you half power a card with sockets? I don't know if you can. I'm taking Monkey's Paw. It could make this real nutty. Ooh, this this could this could be nasty. I I need to see how sick nasty this can be. Yeah, so two copies of Ancient Protection that go into my discard pile are the same. They're the same. Uh, but we gain some vulnerability. Add an orb slam to your hand. I'm more than happy with that. And those copies are just add orb slam to your hand. Sure. Whenever this enemy takes damage, I gain one strength per turn. Yep. No, that's just completely fine as well. It takes damage and I gain one strength for the turn. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, still draw a, uh, draw a card and gain an energy. Yeah, this Monkey's Paw seems like it was the right choice for me. Okay, so it seems like the way to use Spot Weakness is with artifacts so that you can keep all of your strength at the end of your turn. That's, that's how it reads to me, at least. I didn't gain any strength there. Decrease this attack damage by zero. What? I'm not gaining any strength here. It's not according to the cards I'm playing. Okay, that one's definitely not working at the moment. So spot weakness is not working. I would have to hazard a guess that it tried to halve the amount that it should damage by, uh, that it should increase us by and was incapable of doing so. Oh no. That bug might actually end up killing me. I'll take another vent steam here. The Eternal Shame does not actually add a curse to your deck, so... 200 gold and the Curse of Normality? 
Do I have a rest soon? I do have a rest soon. Oh. Well, at least their halved versions are still the same. Okay, so I got strength when you took damage to my thorns? <laughs> not that I'm not okay with it. Mark me down as okay W slash it. Because I don't have time to write long hands. Kidding me? I shouldn't be mindlessly playing all of these cards. I'm diluting the hell out of my deck. Like, if I played my deck optimally, I could end up with just a deck in, like, a couple shuffles that is just Twin Slams and Vent Steams that draw an extra card as well, because I'll socket that Quartz. I need to be very, very careful about what I choose to play here. I'm my own worst enemy, just filling my card with, uh, my deck with discard trash. Do need to get back into defensive mode though. God, those are eventually just going to deal zero damage constantly. No. <laughs> oh, I've somehow made this even more turtly. How have I managed to do this? It's a uniquely strange ability that I have. To break everything in the worst possible way initially. Alright, I'm curled up for four more turns. I don't have to do anything. Yeah, those spot weaknesses just don't work here. That's really unfortunate. I now just have cards on my discard pile that say gain zero block when you're in defensive mode. Come on. Where are my copies that actually deal damage of the twin strikes? Whenever you play a card, add two copies of it to your discard pile at half power. Wait, so you don't add the original one back? Oh, you are kidding me. This is a great way for me to deal no damage very quickly. Spot weakness would have been a way to bail me out of that, but no, it, it, yeah, the original's not even in there. Is the original in here? No? Well, this is going to be a problem. There are going to be certain fights we don't have the ability to win. Take a ruby. Sure again, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain one strength. Yeah, that'll help offset the negative. Um, I guess I'll also remove the normality. Letters to her. Shuffle the new letter at every future non-boss chest. Fit every letter. Shuffle one letter into the start of your deck at the start of the combat. Yeah, that'll give us some nice effects with the monkey's paw.
So I'm gonna take and drink the fruit juice. I do need to visit a uh, space here for a second. One sec. Okay, courts. You need to go into the events theme. And then, do I want to put a ruby and a citrine in event steam? Yes. Right. And I'll smith to get the curl up upgraded. Yeah, I could have just removed the normality there. I should have thought about that. I thought I would have had other cards that I wanted to upgrade, and then it took me a while to realize that no, I don't actually. Okay. I do need to remove those strikes from my deck as well, actually. Hey, the Runic Icosahedron here. Ugh, draw one less card each turn. That's not great for us. When it, gain energy and draw a card whenever you play three zero cost cards in a single turn. That's actually going to happen a lot of the time. So keep an eye out for that one, true believers. Right. Another stasis engine, and I'm afraid that this is all gone to hell now. They don't do out of sync with one another, so I actually have to play a bunch that are zero cost in the same turn. Got it. Um, I'll take a Fractal Strike, getting another zero cost so that I can activate the Stasis Engine here. Wow. Didn't even, did not even end up working. So station en uh, stasis engine rather does make sense for this deck. <laughs> no, none of those make sense here. Well, the gem one did, but I obviously couldn't have taken that there. Uh, Weightless Grab, for every three curses you draw, gain one intangible. No. Sapphire Key, though. Runic Akos Hedron, heals a full. Okay. Not necessary at all, but thank you. Thanks for the thought. your turn if you have no artifact gain an artifact i don't want to shuffle that into my discard pile Ugh, i do have to weaken the enemies right now though there's also all cards in your hand with gems in them deal 15 damage from random enemy for each of the gems in those hands okay never mind I thought that was going to work deck-wide, like last stand, but it doesn't. Error? Stasis in progress? Yeah, we have no more cards that we can stasis. That makes sense. Come on! Let me just murder him! Ah, well, that'll do it. No. If I hadn't exploit gems, this whole deck would be broken already. Spot weak point doesn't seem to be working as intended here, so I refuse to do anything with it. I'll upgrade a strike so that our strikes are less pathetic in the second shuffle. Let's the her obtain a new letter at every future non-boss chest. Yes, we've seen that before. Uh, let's remove a normal strike. And we'll take, uh, what?
I need something that is going to be, like, as powerful every time I play it. I don't know if there is one. Sapphire key, definitely, but... It. A bunch more gold as well. Oh, these are elites now. They, were they always elites? I think they might have always been elites, and I was just so mad that I couldn't tell. Cool. Oh, please take spot weakness. You're welcome to it, frankly. Yeah. Specifically only put cards of a certain type, or am only playing cards of a certain type here so that I can kind of build my deck on the fly? Like some sort of a building deck game? No, there's gotta be a better way to say that. Isn't it strange? There's never a better way to say any of these things that I'm wondering if there's a better way to say. Isn't that weird? Isn't that a little peculiar? Oh well. Kind of appreciate, actually, that they're uh, cleaning up so much of the trash in the deck. That shuriken is essential for building this, by the way, because without that shuriken, none of this works. Gain energy, draw a card. Gain energy, draw a card. Murder. Yes. Okay, I'm pretty sure that from now on, barring ex extremely unlucky circumstances which we just hit. Neat. I was about to say, barring extremely unlucky circumstances, we should just be able to pummel damage in just by hitting the same button. This should now just be an infinite, functionally. It takes a while to kill, but... At the very least, we got to show off a bunch of different dynamics for this character in the first episode. I'll say that much. That definitely happened. Sweet. Oh god, draw one less card each turn. That sucks. I don't like it, but I'm gonna curl up here. Some more curling up left in the deck now. My only chance in these fights is to build the infinite, so... That's what I'm gonna do. Every extra card we can remove from this deck is so much better for the infinite as well. I can't believe I ever focused on anything else. See, playing those collops has now screwed me. Needed them in play earlier, but now it's screwed my ability to generate these strikes fast enough. Let's 
strength was broken while I was in defensive mode. At least that works out for us. And one jungle hunter down, finally. Please just let me murder. I have waited so long. I have been such a good boy. Got him. Woo! Right. No. Just a strong no on all of those. Thank you. Double defensive mode from the curl up there. I'm going to rest because I just need the HP to survive until I can start punishing this boss. Roll to die. Gain one strength, one dex, one focus. Lovely. Okay. So we twin slam there before we get into the new deck shuffle. So that the twin slams are available in our new deck shuffle. And now things should be getting off to the right start. Perfect. Basically, my entire draw pile at this point should be cards that I want to play. Immediately drew what has to be the only card in the deck that I didn't want to play in that scenario. Bravo. Bravo. Okay. Easy damage. Oh, the infinite lives on. It will take vaguely infinite years to complete as well, but look. It is only fair that the game pays off with something like this after all of what's occurred earlier. I just need to spam one and click effectively here. And stop for a second so that I don't play the curl up. We get so much energy out of this as well. I should consider having like an X cost card as a payoff. exploit gems immediately gets upgraded by inclusion in our deck royal goblet gain energy at the start of each turn draw one fuel cards each turn new upon pick up lose 35 max hp upon receiving a debuff negate it and if the source was a monster apply it the debuff to the monster instead <gasps> every time i gain strength that's just gonna keep it right yeah, we don't need extra energy. I'm, I'm taking the prosthetics. Every time I gain strength, this should just keep it. Because I don't gain the debuff, lose strength at the end of your turn. That should be, ideally, how this works. Draw an additional card every turn. Nice. Alright, let's see if it is. Yep, I gain two strength, and I don't lose any. Oh, hell yeah. This is about to get real nutty. I do have to balance out everything else, though, so... This 
still very much need to get to just me and my swords. I'm going to dilute out all of these curl ups that we used earlier. Also, those vent steams need to be removed. Go get those extra attacks. Yeah, well, I really feel like I should curl up once more. As it turns out, I definitely should have done that at the start there. Okay, we do have a bunch more twin strikes left in the deck, so we should be okay. That'll get him. Woo. Uh, get a crystal shiv? No, crystal shivs would go into my discard pile. That'd be awful. Oh god. Heal to full, yay! Uh, these fights are tragic in their own way, though. Just how long they take. I can't actually play any card that is not going to give me back everything I played and more at this rate. It frankly feels irresponsible to play cards that aren't Twin Strike. Or just like shuffles to give us draw. Come on. Don't do me dirty. Yep, that's that's me done dirty. It's okay. I'll kill the first liner off of that. Gain defensive mode for a bunch more turns. As long as I can decide that I don't care about the health of my next shuffle, I can be okay. Got him. Whew. Uh, Walker Claw? No. Add a socket to any socketed card. Oh my god. Getting a fourth socket on exploit sockets. We are doing this. Give me a bunch of good cards to socket. Nope. Um. Okay, if I purchase that Master of Strategy, it gets upgraded. It can only go down to draw one card at the worst. Helps us through our first cycle. Sure, we'll take it. Um, none of these other cards. We just need to remove cards from the deck at this point. Abacus, whenever you shuffle your discard pile, gain six block. We don't do that often. And we need to upgrade all of the Grinning Jars before Grinning Jar is actually a good pickup for this deck. Sweet. So I've already accelerated myself to my second shuffle where all the crazy things happen. Nikokosahedron. Neat. Just going to make sure that I don't play any of the dud cards that I've been ignoring. Yep, I'm going to allow myself to take damage this turn. Just so that I don't play any of those duds. Okay. 
this should very much be close to a cycle at this point, right? If any of these drew more cards, like the exploit gems, if I got the exploit gems with like a, just a couple card draws in there, this gets infinite so damn quickly. Whereas right now, in order to get infinite, this needs to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to hold eight cards in hand and be cycling a ninth. So this doesn't actually just get functionally infinite. Or rather, it doesn't actually get infinite. It gets functionally infinite, which is that with the amount of value we're generating, it's going to be difficult for the enemy to live until it would need to be alive for us to worry. But it's not an infinite. Those Master of Strategies are now drawing zero cards, actually. So they're good for the early shuffle, bad for the late shuffle, though. We could just have an exploit gem that's just like gain a bunch of strength, gain a bunch of decks. Because then I never lose them thanks to the prosthetics. But I don't really play any defensive cards, so I don't know. Getting the cycle is better. Call here. Okay, this could be a problem for us. Three artifact at the start of the fight? Okay. Quite handy. Right, I'm gonna echo draft the twin slam, see if I get three. Yeah, I get four copies of that added to this card pile. Beautiful. Yeah, I should actually now be able to infinite. All right, every card in here draws a card, at least. Okay. Leave the master of strategy in hand, as long as I can. So I don't actually want to cycle that back if I can avoid it. Just because eventually that will draw zero cards. Okay. But there is another Master of Strategy left in the deck, I believe, so... There's two. So we will draw them eventually. Yep, there they are. All right. This is an interesting build. Promise list. Gained one strength for every quest completed since this was picked up. Promise list was a quest itself. Beautiful. I want vulnerable to all enemies. No. Do just want draws. All right. Yeah, we should be able to kill the transient here. Kane, bunch of vulnerable. Lame. Oh dear. We needed exactly that card earlier. Like, just before any of these. Oh, well. Spent some steam. Draw some cards. Okay, this is... This is not going to be an infinite... I'm going to try and keep it to just... Oh, it's not even going to work if I do that. I wanted to keep it to just the twin strikes if I could. 
They're so few and far between. So there's five more twin strikes left in that deck. Don't want to play too many cards that aren't the twin strikes, because that's slowing me down. Overall, at least. Okay, there we go. Look, I'm not going to kill here. It's fine. <sighs> Citrine gain an energy? That's not actually necessary. We already have way too much energy. We need just card draw. That is, as well as war paint. Upgrades two defense. I both... I intend for all of those defense to be cut from the deck, so... Onyx, gain one artifact. No, we can't be debuffed anymore, so no. Uh, Citrine makes no sense. Glyphstone upon pick up upgrade... Uh, sorry, transform two random strike or defend cards, then upgrade them. Pretty good. Trumpet, if you play only attacks into combat, heal 10. Doesn't happen. Upon pick up, you retain a card at the end of your turn. If that card would exhaust you to being ethereal, it's this card instead. Don't care. Uh, survey would break really quickly. In a bad way. Um, I'll take a Glyphstone. So we ended up with bronze armor and pre-program. Not interested in either of those, frankly. Do you need to remove more cards from the deck? Ooh, gain an additional energy at the start of each of our turns. I like it. And now's the part where we die. I like it. No, I should have vent steam before I did the first thing there. Oh, that's my bad. Also should have just curled up at the start and accepted that I'm going to trash my deck this combat. Because I definitely have to trash my deck this combat. Ouch. Come on. Nice. Gotta play a bunch of twin slams there. I'm diluting out the burns that are put into my deck with all of these cards that aren't burns. Hell yes. Twin slam, twin slam. There's only one more in the discard pile at the moment. Got him. Woo! Nanobots. The start of your turn, enhance all cards in your hand. Sorry, the start of combat, enhance all cards in your hand. For each gem in all of your socketed cards. That's got to get ridiculous, right? Right? Because I duplicate all of my socketed... Crystal Beam has to get ridiculous. I... I am certain of it. Cease and return to Exordium? No, thank you. Okay, so 47 damage currently. So if I use a Twin Slam, 55. Oh, it works. Oh, it works. This is so good. This is the finisher we've been looking for. Oh, it's perfect. It is absolutely perfect. Uh, no. Don't care for any of these, frankly. 
mulligan to our hand. That's actually quite good for us. Oh, no, but the mulligan... No, it's purged. Does not go into your exhaust pile, but does it go into my discard pile? Ooh. I wonder. It does go into my discard pile. Oh, mulligans would be so broken for this deck. Alright, socketed beam. The crystal beam is starting to get real powerful here. I do need to use it as a finisher, though, because it's losing its scaling at quite a rate. All right. Another twin slam. Come on. Hey, Crystal Bay. Neat. Stasis engine. Um, I mean, that very quickly does just start activating constantly. But the problem is it's also a card in the deck in its own right. I don't need to include it. I'm fine without it. I don't need to include it. In the Coco Sahedron, we get three artifact in this combat. Nice. Could have been a lot worse. Very pleased with actually how, the, uh, that, how it went. Yep, I, I need to just pass. Terminate Guardian immediately. Complete protocol failure detected. Yeah, no, I would call this a complete failure on your parts. You're not mischaracterizing it, I'll say that much. That crystal gem hasn't even seen anything yet. Called that right crystal beam all ah, right sorry i've never felt more like a homeworld gem than when i said <laughs> those crystal gems haven't even seen anything yet my diamond um Keep going. Keep on digging. Find those twin slams. Yes. Channel the power of the twin. Yeah, I'm just going to straight up murder the back line with the crystal beam, if you don't mind. Busy work of drawing all of these extra cards. It's entirely unnecessary. If I just hadn't included those cards in the deck in the first place, we would have been so fine. This could have been so quick. Instead, this is looking to be a two hour episode. I'll have this one online in time, but I would be very surprised if I had the. The Slate the Spire episode previous to this on time. Uh, the reason I'd be so surprised is because that's already nine minutes late because of how long this recording has taken. I wasn't expecting this to be a one and a half hour recording, frankly. Yeah, Master Strategy is no longer drawing cards, but it gets us through the first shuffle super effectively, which is why we keep it. Prime Directive, destroy heart. Alright, we get to remove another card at this upcoming shop. I love doing that. 
Unfortunately, we don't get to socket anything past this point. So even if I find a bunch of the card I need here... Oh, I was preparing to and I didn't find anything. Cool. Even if I did, it wouldn't work. Uh, pawn pick up. Choose a card. Start each, card uh, start each combat, rather, with that card in stasis. Interesting. Um, I don't really want any cards in stasis because I don't want them back. Uh, all right. Let's remove a... Let's remove spot weakness. Just because of the fact that it's broken means it's really difficult to use here. Uh, I'll also drop Milkshake. That's not going to be relevant. I'll take Swift Potion, which also gets us another quest completion, which gets us another strength from the promised uh, list. And then I actually might just fight the... Yeah, I'll fight the shopkeep. I'm going to need some of this extra strength. Also, it gives me another chance to ro uh, roll the Runic Decahedron. Hello, merchant. Okay. I'll take my fair slugs, thank you. Ow. I think you'll find those slugs were a little more than fair. Crystal Beam should be increasing its value over time. With each Twin Slam we play. Another Twin Slam. Now, the rest of the deck should just cycle, right? It is going to cycle at the moment. But not the next version of this deck. Because it will have the Masters of Strategy in it that draws zero cards. So at the moment, this deck is fine to shuffle. But that Master of Strategy is going to become a problem in the next shuffle. That said, I don't think we're getting to the next shuffle. Because that Crystal Beam is lethal. Uh, nice rug. Start each combat with one plated armor for every 50 gold you have. I'll also take the bronze armor plate. Whenever you use a card while in defense mode, gain one more block. As well as a bundle of herbs and a bottled black hole here. Uh, I guess I'll put curl up there. Just takes it out of the first couple shuffles. Uh, there's nothing else that I wanted here. I'll take the elixir and the... Me. Elixir will use... Uh, will be used to anti-burn my deck after the boss burns it. Use 10 HP. Thanks. You're not in stasis. Started combat with curl up in stasis. Why are you in my deck if you're in stasis? Oh, something screwy's going on here. I can feel it. It's in stasis, but also we're in defensive mode for two turns? I know we'd be in for one for the 10 damage we've taken, but why are we in for the second turn? I just don't understand. Okay, good crystal gem there. Crystal gem, crystal beam, rather. Sorry. It's fine. We should be pretty well defended. We definitely seem to be. Oh, thank you for trying to debuff me, but uh, I'll be taking no part of that. I'm fine to curl up here because I know that I'm not getting back to that curl up in this lifetime. Mm 
What? What? Ghost merchant, what? All right. It has the gold shield. It has ghostly as well. Reduce the first damage taken to one each turn. That's fine. I'm doing like an infinite kind of thing. We'll just hit you with something before we hit you with what we hit you with. Savvy? You still gotta hit these debuffs. I I hope I get something extra for killing the ghost merchant here, cause You've just taken all of my money and you got gold shields. At the end of the turn it gains 51 blocks, so it gains my money. Wait. Much more than my money. I had a lot more. If I don't get all of my money back. Ooh. There will be absolute hell. You've not seen hell like this before. Got him. Nope, I don't even get all of them back. Quartz draw a card. God, if I could socket that now, I'd be so into it. Wait, I did I get all my money back? I did get all my money back. Never mind. I was wrong, I guess. There's one of three rare cards that's my hand. I shouldn't have played that. I don't know what I was thinking. Why'd I do that? all that trash in my deck. I'm going to immediately drink my elixir, burning out the cards before I even draw them, so I get a full hand. Ha <laughs> ha! Cheating. I need to not be taking all of this extra damage right now, but now that we're in defensive mode, uh, cards played are going to count towards our defense as well, so we should be fine. Sweet. This infinite is obviously not a great idea against this boss in particular, but I built it external, so you'll have to forgive me. Yeah, right. We're still fully defended. It's fine. That crystal beam is essential for this deck. I am so glad that I have it. More than happy to take a bunch of damage until I'm curled up again. Thirty-one incoming damage. Yeah, somehow I feel like we'll have lethal by that time. Call it an extremely accurate hunch. All right. Well, this has been an absolute marathon of a first episode for this character. I told you I was not going to let this happen without getting a win. Uh. So that looks like the defect reprogrammed the Guardian, then the Guardian killed the heart, and then everyone else escaped? I may have read that awfully, frankly. I'm mostly focused on the fact that... Uh, 
It worked. That would have been so much easier if we got that one copy of Exploit Gems earlier. Because it would have just been draw two cards, gain two energy. And I just would have played it constantly and drawn out my entire deck perfectly, right? All I needed was a card that was had sockets and had two draws on it instead of just the one. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire Modded. Uh, the name of the character has been The Guardian. Yet again, I will mention The Guardian has been made by Michael Mayhem and Z Woofies for additional design. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game past, present, and future, as well as a link to the Steam Store Workshop where you can pick up this mod that was released about two hours ago now. Good lord, this was a long episode. Uh, there is also, by the way, the link to Michael Mayhem's game available on Steam, Sumo, linked in the description down below as well. Check that out. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.